The Surface Duo 2 has been on the market for about a year and a half now, and I've had mine for just over a year. I think it might be time for a follow-up. In my initial review, I summarize everything by saying, overall, I really love this phone. Most of the time. Actually, I'd say about 95% of the time. 40% of the time, I enjoy using it more than my other devices. 40% of the time, it's about the same. 15% of the time, I could maybe do something better on a different device, like my Z Fold 3, but still enjoy using it in general. And then 5% of the time, something wrong happens that makes me the tiniest bit frustrated. Has that changed at all in the past year? Well, sort of. For the past year or so, I've had this stashed away in a pocket as I went on road trips across the Midwest and took long walks around Chicago. It's also sat on my desk most workdays as my go-to personal device while working. Generally speaking, it's a fantastic piece of kit, whether I'm using it to navigate between states or for casually catching Pokemon. There's still a lot to love here in this device that's kind of aging a bit. The calculation that I made originally about doing something better on another device about 15% of the time has actually shrunk quite a bit as well, because the device has genuinely become better over time with not only an update to Android 12, but also various updates to performance in general. If you're looking for a general highlight of these changes, there's a great read by Dan Seifert over on The Verge describing how key software updates have made him come around to the phone over time. I also can't help but agree with the part of the article where he talks about the Duo 2 being best used as a secondary device. While I do switch back and forth, most of the past year has seen the Fold 4 be used as my primary device more often. A greater percentage of the time, the Fold 4 just feels more consistent for use with work-related applications and for B-roll shots for these videos. I freaking love the Duo 2 though, and use it as much as possible as often as I can. Part of that is because I found most things I'd want to do on a phone improved by the existence of a second screen. During my year with the Surface Duo 1 as my primary device, I often limited my usage to one screen to preserve battery life. Due to the better efficiency of the Snapdragon 888 and larger battery overall, the Duo 2 still lasts a full day of reasonable use without an additional charge, even with a greater chunk of that time using both screens at once. Now that I don't have to worry about batteries much, it's really changed how I default to using the device. That is, I now basically leave the second screen on even when I'm not using it. Not only because it's comfortable to hold a duo like a book, but also just having that screen ready and waiting is extremely convenient. If I'm browsing Twitter and come across an article that seems interesting, I can tap the link to have it open on the unused screen, preserving where I'm at in my Twitter scroll. The same thing goes for searching Google for Reddit threads, where Reddit will naturally open on the second screen without any fuss. It might seem like a pretty small thing to many folks, but that sort of interaction actually tends to be quite irritating on single screen devices. I'll open a link in some app and have to spam the back gesture multiple times when I'm done with it just to get back to whatever I was doing before. Here, it's less invasive. Plus, having the ability to stare at multiple apps or web pages at once is a huge time saver if I need to reference something or copy information over. I've also taken to spanning reading material across screens more than ever. Of course, reading comics via Shonen Jump or play books works perfectly, and the Kindle compatibility meant for a really easy time getting into Genki to finally start learning Japanese. However, even spanning web pages across both screens or menus when eating at a restaurant, at which time I'm really glad they added the outside camera by the way, all of it feels extremely good and much more comfortable than a single typical slab phone. The gap between displays still feels like it gets in the way sometimes. I wouldn't recommend spanning video at all, 
But for tasks where my eyes are focused on a single point anyway, seeing more of the page in my periphery creates the illusion of a full page experience. Literally, unless I'm caught with an image that takes up more than a single screen at once, it's more comfortable to read web pages using both screens at the same time. For me, at least. That doubles for any sort of typing experience. Using the bottom screen as a full-on keyboard to respond to text messages remains the most comfortable experience I've had to date typing on a smartphone. One-screen typing also feels quite good. With one screen active, the keyboard has enough width for both my thumbs, and I really haven't had many negative experiences with it. So yeah, in general, I keep finding time and time again that having two screens has this emergent effect that really increases the overall usability of my phone. Heck, I've even grown to really appreciate the glance bar. At launch, it felt like many folks wrote off the glance bar as a gimmick without real practical purpose. I largely agreed and said in my initial review that I wouldn't mind if they removed it from a future iteration of the device. Yet a few updates later, Microsoft added compatibility for more than the stock Android messaging app for notifications. Now whenever I get a message through Facebook Messenger or Discord, I see the BART light up with a message icon. It's still not entirely as practical to use when taking out of my pocket over just cracking the device open a bit but it's surprisingly useful while at my desk. I'll typically have my Duo sitting with the bar facing me right next to my work computer. If I get a notification, the bar is in my line of sight and I can quickly determine if that was a message that I need to respond to. It's a small thing, but really helps with prioritizing when I actually need to interact with my phone on a day-to-day -day basis. Especially useful for when I'm trying to focus and actually get work done. Beyond productivity, the Duo has also been a pretty great entertainment device. Using it to watch a video on one screen while actively doing something else on the other screen has come in clutch more than a few times. As has the ability to use the second screen as a stand to prep up the Duo for a video or even to keep audio playback controls within quick reach. Even bigger, I've really enjoyed using this for gaming. Now, Full disclosure, I've made a ton of videos on different devices and my phones are generally at the lowest tier of device I want to use for gaming unless I'm making a video or actively tinkering with something. I just, I have a ton of better options lying around. But I've consistently found the Duo 2 to be the best possible device for DS games, period. Even better than my DSi or a new 3DS XL. The screen is just incredibly big and such high quality that the games feel really comfortable to play for long periods of time. Pairing it with a Slim Pen 2 is also so much better than the rough, scratchy feel of using a typical DS stylus these days. It really makes stylus-heavy games like Meteos shine, and I just really love it. I've said this many times already, but the Duo line is just about perfect for dual screen emulation due to its form factor, and it's more than earned its spot as my go-to emulation device, and is one of the few devices I'd consider better than original hardware for many use cases. It's also been an incredibly good device for streaming games. It's very pocketable and offers the extra benefit of still being able to use my phone as normal while still in the middle of a game thanks to the second screen and the snug fit of a GameSir X2. I showed off some of this in action back during our Stadia video, and it's been great to use it like that when I want to hop into a game real quick and don't have anything else on hand. In a pinch, I've even enjoyed touch controls via Game Pass for quick, chill bursts of gameplay on platformers and puzzle games. That is, uh, before updates killed the feature at least. It's still available via the beta app, but the main app stopped supporting the expanded control scheme a while ago. Not long after, it stopped working altogether. Currently, I can't open the main Game Pass app on my Duo 2, nor can I seem to fully uninstall it. That's not a good look for what used to be a solid integration of their phone with one of their key services. If that kind of backtracking feels a bit odd to you, this is the part of the video where we get into the frustrations 
which make the Duo 2 difficult to recommend to an average person as a primary general purpose Android phone. To be clear, most of the time, the Duo 2 is fantastic and feels like everything I'd want out of a dual screen smartphone. Most of the time, it also performs exactly like a flagship phone running a Snapdragon 888 with a 90 hz display that is very smooth, very snappy. However, on occasion, I found the phone to stutter a bit and animations to slow down considerably. Restarting the device tends to clear the issue. That might mean it's a matter of RAM filling up, but it's an immediate source of friction whenever it happens at all. For someone less patient than I am, I can imagine that being cause for an immediate attempt to return the device, or at least rant about it online. For me, the rear slowdown preceding a restart isn't too terrible though. Honestly, I should probably restart my devices more often, if I'm being honest. Nah, what really irritates me is the awkward system behavior surrounding chat bubbles. Sometimes, if I leave a chat open, turn off my display, and then turn it back on, my screens will freeze until I lock my phone again. Other times, the chat itself will freeze and freeze other elements on that screen that it's on, but the notification shade will still seem to work and the other screen will still seem to work. No clue what's going on. Links and videos in my chat bubbles have at least mostly started working since my initial review, but more than a few links in Facebook Messenger still don't open as intended. It's like there's some odd interaction between Microsoft's flavor of Android and Facebook apps, and it adds up to the few points in time where I really feel the need to switch to another device to do what I need to do. Additionally, while well, updates, especially to Android 12, have generally meant better performance overall, the vast majority of the time, it's also led to some confusing rollbacks of features. The main one being that recent updates have tried to hide the files application, which is concerning. For my general phone usage, I often need to access the files on my device. Whether that's for general file storage, sideloading an app, or organizing file structures for a new project. Even the hint that this features something Microsoft's willing to hide has me a bit worried. Like, I should not need to uninstall updates for such a crucial app to be able to access it normally. That frustration compounds with a bug that's made screen rotation more annoying as well. The Duo 2 is one phone, like the single phone, that I've found to actually work really well when I keep auto rotation enabled. Everything rotates cleanly, with the exception of certain apps, and it adds to the overall usability of the phone being a lot different than other phones. Yet, whenever my phone's restarted, auto rotation is disabled it doesn't take a lot of effort to re-enable it, but I also don't know that I need to do it until I'm right in the middle of doing something where it'd be really useful to go from landscape to portrait orientation and just... <laughs> yeah, it's all these little annoyances which keep the Duo 2 from being as great as it could be. And that's really not helped by the fact that Microsoft's rumored to be ditching the dual screen form factor altogether. And they've also stopped selling the device through their online store well before it ever got a price cut to something more affordable for most people. There's, there's so much to love about the Duo 2, and so much more I can do with the device like it over more standard phones or even something like my Fold 4. Microsoft's even helped to add a ton of features to Android itself to even make this phone as good as it currently is. But it still needs more polish to really grow outside the core audience already interested in it. At this point, I'm not certain whether this phone will ever receive that degree of polish though. Even if it's grown tremendously since its launch, it's all giving me flashbacks to Windows Mobile and how great that could have been with just a little more streamlining to make it more viable for other people. As it is right now, I think the Surface Duo 2 is the perfect phone for folks like me, who don't mind the occasional awkwardness with their electronics, but could use a really solid device that's just as good at general productivity as it is with DS emulation. My original review summary 
of the phone being great only 95% of the time is still fairly accurate from my experience. But I do think it's grown to be better than most other devices for my use cases more often than not. The percentage of times when I'd rather reach for another device have shrunk considerably and are really isolated to the rare times when I'm irritated by the phone slowing down or not responding. Still, I totally recognize that I'm privileged enough to have multiple phones that I can switch to at any given time if something frustrates me enough to do so. If you don't have that same luxury, and the idea of spending a thousand plus dollars on a smartphone that might not behave as expected any percentage of the time sounds like a cause for anxiety, I still don't think there's been enough work done to make the Surface Duo 2 right for you. Just please, join me in the potentially fruitless hope that Microsoft will clear up these issues with a dual screen Surface Duo 3. Those have been my thoughts though. I'd love to know yours. Are you someone who's been interested in the Duo line but has been hesitant for one reason or another to actually buy one? Are you a Duo owner who has their own thoughts about using either of the two devices over time? Let me know down in the comments. As always, if you found this video interesting or informative, go ahead and give it a like. Then get subscribed for more foldable content in the future. If you'd like to support the channel, also consider checking out the Patreon and Ko-fi pages linked in the description. Oh, and uh, one more thing. As an added note about the Duo 2, I used the pen cover for a number of months. It worked great and was perfect for keeping the pen continuously available and charged. Whether for sketching or playing games, the Slim Pen 2 actually feels really good to use. However, I found that I really enjoyed the texture of the Duo's glass body more than the pen cover and eventually had to remove it. I also found the pen a bit awkward to keep attached in pockets, especially if the pen managed to get snagged at all. Still, if you're looking for a stylus support phone, the Duo 2 is a really good choice, um, although you might have some trouble actually finding a pen and pen cover at this point. Anyway, that's all for this video. Until next time, catch you later.